So it's come to my attention that I don't think I've been particularly positive when it comes to my A-levels, and that's pretty bad, I think. So I thought to myself, why not make a video talking about my favourite A-level? Now, I don't know how this video is going to do, but I'm truly not bothered. I'm going to be making a video soon talking about what I want to do with my YouTube channel, because I feel like my reaction videos are fun to make. But I think I make them too often and I feel like I don't focus too much on my more creative videos and because of that it linked to a massive surge in views and popularity but then a massive trough. Okay so because of that I'm going to be really re-engineering my channel to hopefully allow it to prosper in the future because right now yes I don't get that many views but I still get a good number of views you know it's not like my channel's completely dead to the floor but I would happily like to diversify my content and I came up with this video idea simply to talk about what A-level chemistry is actually like. Uh, I understand that Jade of Jade made a video on A-level chemistry and it was pretty um it was a pretty boring video, I'm not gonna lie. She clearly was trying to be as non-controversial as possible. And she went on about how she dropped one of her AS levels. So what she did is she took four A levels and then she dropped one and she did an AS in it. I believe it was English literature and then she continued with chemistry. She preferred to take chemistry for the second year rather than English literature just because it would look better for applying for Oxford. Funny enough, she didn't actually get accepted into Oxford, so her choosing chemistry for the main reason of it looking better on an application didn't work out. I'm not here to flipping slate on Jade or Jade, I think I've done that enough recently. Before this video starts, leave me a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you're new today. I literally look so white right now, like flipping egg. I feel like if I went to goddamn Detroit, I'd be killed straight away. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, because I'm the most white person, I think you've ever seen pretty much. I promise I'm not that white. I have a white light on, I promise, okay? So A-level chemistry for me has been quite interesting. I haven't actually finished the second year, so technically I'm not fully qualified to talk about the subject, but I don't care, okay? <laughs> so far, chemistry has been the best subject that I've chosen by far. And that's quite surprising, saying that I never used to like chemistry. And let me just talk to you guys about how it went for me. So originally when I did chemistry at GCSE, I despised it. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat anything. The reason why I didn't like it was because of the teacher. Now with me, I noticed that the subjects that I have good teachers in, I always seem to like the subject. And I think that very much reflects on me as a person. Like, I can literally learn anything as long as the person teaching it like, I actually like them. And this is why I think I'm good at teaching myself things, because I like myself. I'm a narcissist, guys. I like myself. But pretty much because I like myself and respect myself, I can teach myself things. I, I think that's why I'm better at learning subjects that I have a bad teacher for by myself, rather than the bad teacher teaching me them. Because I feel like when I had a bad teacher for, say, English, I just didn't have any motivation to do well in the subject because every time I thought about English, I thought about how bad the teacher was and how much I disliked being in the lesson, not the actual content of the subject. Chemistry was quite weird for me because I started off hating it simply because I didn't get some of the basics of it. And this was something that I actually got very worried about when I took it as an A-level. I thought that because I got a B at GCSE and I, I honestly thought I was going to get an A or an A star at GCSE because the exam was so easy. And I'm not even saying that to sound like a prick. And I'm not stupid, may I just mention. Yes, I didn't do that well in the test. But I still thought it was easy. And I honestly think to this day that it was marked incorrectly. My papers were. It was a really weird feeling getting a B at my chemistry GCSE simply because I knew that the paper was so easy and I didn't genuinely understand how I got a B because the grade boundaries were low as well. So I genuinely think that at GCSE I wasn't a grade B. I thought I was a grade A. But regardless of that, you know, that didn't mean anything. Uh, when I started revising chemistry two weeks before the exam, I didn't revise that much for my GCSEs. I just want to mention that. With chemistry, there was something that I liked about it. Like, when, when I started revising it uh, at GCSE level, I kind of liked how everything made sense. That was the thing that mattered to me when it came to chemistry. And when I was deciding what A-levels to choose, I was very clueless. <laughs> okay, very clueless indeed. I didn't really have a direct aspiration. I didn't really want to do a specific job. I was very geared towards YouTube, as dumb as it sounds thinking about it, because this was a while ago. You know, I got my GCSE results over a year ago. Flipping it, that's depressing as hell. Like, my YouTube channel was doing so well. I remember uh, in the run-up to GCSE results day, 
Uh, and because of that, I felt very positive about YouTube and I wasn't really thinking straight when it came to aspirations. And even to this day, I don't really know what I want to do for a living. I know that I want it to be related to chemistry, a uh, hint why it's my favourite subject. I didn't know what I wanted to do fully and I chose chemistry at A-level because I remember when I revised for a GCSE, it was actually fine to revise. Like, I felt like when it came to, say, English, like I thought I was just learning crap that never mattered to me. When I was learning about chemistry, I was learning about specific things and they made sense. Like ionic compounds are so cool. When you think about the ionic structure of, say, salt or magnesium chloride or whatever, I sound like the biggest nerd already, but it's just interesting, like looking at the bonding structure of things and chemistry is all around us. So that was why I was so interested in it. And I just remember G GCSE chemistry wasn't great for me because it didn't go into that much depth about specific topics. And the thing is with me is it takes me a while to get something, but when I get it, I, I get it, okay? It's crazy pretty much because some people they can kind of dip into a topic They can understand half of it and then not understand the rest I'm literally the opposite especially when it comes to a level like if I don't get the topic I'll do bad in it if I get the whole topic I'll do great in it I can tell because my end of unit tests are all over the place Sometimes I'll get grade A's and A stars mostly A's and A stars, but some tests I'll get a D in I remember with physics. I know it's not related to chemistry, but you gotta listen to me anyway God damn it. We did a topic on gravitational fields and then I got a D in that, but then we did electric fields as the next topic, and because they're so closely related, I got to relearn the gravitational fields through that topic. I started visualizing it a lot better, and I got a B in the next test, and then for the gravitational fields, I did a reset, and I got an A in it. So clearly, I did learn after a while, and did much better when I actually understood the concept of it properly. So what is chemistry like at A-level, you may wonder? I can't really say it's easy because if I say it's easy and if I do real bad in the exams, I'm kind of screwed. But I'm going to be honest, it's not as hard as people make it out like. Chemistry is renowned for being one of the hardest A-levels. And it is. I would say it is one of the hardest A-levels. But you've got to realise that the grade boundaries are lower because of that. And the grade boundaries in chemistry are actually quite generous. When I initially chose chemistry a level it started off really hard because the first topics that we do were to do with isomerism and it was to do with like fractional distillation and, and it took me a while to gauge myself with the subject and it is honestly a step up from gcse and this is the thing right they always say a levels are a big step up from gcse business there's no step at all trust me you get it's actually a step down god dang it i want to quickly mention i've done two mocks in chemistry and i got a b in the first one an a in the second one and I did really well. So right now I'm doing well in chemistry. Um, and in most of the unit tests, I average grade A. Physics is not really a step up because it's just a completely different subject, it seems. Like physics goes from just understanding physical concepts. Uh, why did I say physical concepts? That sounds like the most bent thing ever, Jesus Christ. It goes from just understanding concepts about physics to literally just using an equation sheet or an equation booklet and then using the formulas, manipulating them to get specific values. That's literally what physics is. And you do need to have a good understanding of everything. So physics is harder than GCSE. It's the hardest subject I take. Chemistry is weird because what chemistry at A level is, it's like GCSE, just everything's more in depth. And that's really it. And honestly, if you are interested in chemistry, you can be quite easily good at it because you just need to remember things, it seems. The maths in chemistry is tough, okay? Uh, the maths, I very much underestimated. I'm very surprised I've managed to do so well when it comes to the mathematics side of both physics and chemistry. I love how I say the mathematical side of physics. The whole subject is mathematical. What am I on about, flipping egg? But for some reason, I, I don't know how I got a grade 7 in maths, an A, and that has allowed me to do fine the maths of physics and chemistry without taking it at A-level. If you're someone who wants to take chemistry at A-level and you're worried because you don't want to do maths, you don't have to take maths. The maths isn't that hard, but it's very prominent in the topic. And if you don't get the maths in chemistry, you will literally lose like 30% marks i would say probably but the maths in chemistry is quite forgivable if you do a lot of questions on the topic you'll get the equations you'll understand how to do the mathematics side of it in general i'm not even gonna lie it's interesting the whole subject is interesting i don't really have every chemistry topic turns me on a lot that's a fantastic fact about me like uh, with benzene like the ring turns me on I'm not weird, guys. <laughs> I promise. I'm a normal guy. I'm a study YouTuber, you know? <laughs> <laughs>
Jesus Christ. With me, I've learned that if you make a subject into a joke, it's actually a lot easier to study for. Because with me, I have this long running joke in my head. Okay, no one else finds it funny, only me, that I have an intimate relationship with chemistry. And this means every time I read like a book, I'm like, yes, I love you. I like kissed a revision guide. And it sounds so pathetic, but it works. Because you actually revise. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so sad. And I also make jokes about how, you know, I sit on the toilet and just read the revision guide. It's not even a joke. I actually do it. But like, it works, you know, because I could just sit there for like 30 minutes and read it. And it doesn't even feel like 30 minutes because it's a long running joke. I'm laughing constantly. I'm like, oh, I'm glad I'm revising on the toilet. Uh -huh. But I'm actually revising. So it works for me. I, I don't know why I'm giving you guys that advice actually thinking about it. But yeah, chemistry is good in that aspect. I had an issue though with chemistry as a subject last year. And it wasn't to do with the teachers. The teachers that we had, actually, to be fair, we had two teachers for chemistry. One of them left because she got pregnant, uh, pretty much, uh, which was a good thing. I'm glad she got pregnant. I'm glad she never came back because she was not a good teacher. I did not get on with her simply because she was very, like, she just couldn't handle the class. And, like, it's a sixth form class, which is flipping depressing. If you can't handle ten people, they're all losers as well. It's chemistry as well. Like, flipping heck, what are you doing? And she just wasn't good at explaining concepts. But when she got replaced, the content itself was taught to us very, very well. And we have good teachers now. I switched classes as well for some reason. I mean, I didn't choose to switch classes. The classes just changed. Which was a great thing. Because last year, there was kind of this meme in my class that I was the best chemist. Because I remember um, someone saying that I was actually bad at chemistry or something. And I was like, oh no, I'm top of the class. And I said that as a fact. It was a fact. And obviously, if people weren't particularly happy with that in my class, they took that as like a direct insult. They thought I was just flaunting or bragging or something like that. So there was always this running joke of, oh, he's the best in the class. And then they changed that into, he's the worst chemist. And literally everyone would be like, oh yeah, you're the worst chemist. And it was a joke, I get it, but like the pressure on me to do well in exams went through the roof. Like every end of unit test, I was thinking to myself, I need to do well, otherwise people are just going to take the rip out of me. And it seemed like every time I did well, no one cared. But if I did bad, everyone cared. And that really did peed me off, I'm not going to lie. But because the class has changed, it really changed. And that's much, much better. And I'm kind of glad that the class has changed because now I have no friends. I mean, I do have like a... Like, like, people I get on with, I guess. But I don't have any friends in my class, which is a great thing. It means that I can have a whole... It means I can concentrate on the work. I'm definitely not depressed, and I wish I had more friends. What are you on about? But why am I even talking about this? I just realised. <laughs> what was this video even going to be titled? God dang it, it better get views. Okay, because I like making these videos, so you guys better flip and enjoy it. God. The required practicals that you do in chemistry are actually really interesting. They're good. The one thing I really like about chemistry, though, is the fact that you can kind of... I don't, I don't want to sound like an idiot or anything, but you can kind of slack, but then get back up and be fine with the topic. I know for a fact that in physics, if we start a new topic on, say, capacitors, if you don't get every single lesson, you're screwed. You have to go through the whole thing again if you want to learn it. You can't learn specific segments. For chemistry, it's different. I feel like if you start a new topic... It doesn't matter if you don't get all of it. You can still get a good amount of marks. For physics, it's completely different. In conclusion, uh, chemistry is a fantastic subject, I think. It's genuinely really good. I feel a bit annoyed, though, because I feel like the subjects I enjoy, I enjoy simply because of the teachers. Um, I have great teachers for chemistry. They're very good. It's like for physics, we used to have worse teachers. Now we have better teachers, and now I like the subject a lot more. And then for business, you know, our teachers are... Well, I say our teachers. I say it like people agree with me. I think the teachers aren't that great. I mean, I've got along with one of them a lot better recently because I actually did the homework so maybe, maybe that's changed. Uh, I'm actually planning to study a chemistry degree that's what I aspire to do. I can't really say what uni I want to go to simply because I will literally get people who hate me and they'll email the goddamn uni and they'll be like oh how to Cameron word of warning how to Cameron wants to apply to this university he is a sociopath and psychopath. Arr. That's what people would probably message uh, the uni. So maybe I wouldn't get in because of that. Just because of slander pretty much. Which is sad, but you know, it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. So I don't know if this video was at all helpful. It probably wasn't. Uh, but it, it's a good subject. Okay, that's all that matters. I enjoyed doing it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As I mentioned before, I want to diversify my channel. I want to make content that's more geared towards my personality and 
stories I have to tell. I don't want to quit reaction videos because reaction videos, I think, are quite good. I think my reaction videos are quite good. I get a lot of positive feedback on them. But I would prefer to make content that's very dependent on me and I can make unique. I feel like there's a lot more creative potential when it comes to videos like this. If you guys have any ideas for me, leave me a comment. Smash like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you guys later. Bye.